This is the Amaran 300C. Let's unbox it. This is actually a way better box and case and everything than the one that the 100D came in. So that's nice because it's actually like a, you know, easy box to actually carry it around in. Probably not as good as the like soft cases that like the Aperture Light Stormlights come in, but it's a big upgrade and I actually quite like this. So in the box, obviously we have the 300C. Now this is a 300 watt full color light. So that's what the 300 and the C stand for. So it is a little bit bigger than the 100D that I already have. There's sort of two main reasons that I got it and it's 300 and the C more powerful than the 100D I have because even this, like it would be nicer if I could have it just a bit brighter. And it is also helpful to be able to adjust the color temperature, which this one you can do. And this one also goes full RGB. So that's nice. We've got cables, power cable, or oh, big charging brick. That makes sense. For it to be 300 watts, it needs a bigger brick than the 100D. And then finally, we got the reflector. Pretty standard. This just looks slightly different to the 100D. And that's pretty much it. There's like the documentation stuff, but that's it. Let's uh, actually get it hooked up and turned on. So I didn't get a modifier for this yet, just because, you know, it'd be another like $300 for like the Light Dome 3, which I think is gonna be the one I get. Cause the Light Dome Mini 2, it's pretty good. It's just kind of small and it would be good to have a small one and a big one. Also with the threes, the mini three and the light dome three, they're way quicker to set up. So I think this one I'll leave set up like all the time. Not that it's hard to pack down and set up, but the new ones are way easier and you could do it in a matter of seconds. So that's probably going to be what I, what I end up doing in the future. But for now, I'm just going to use it with the reflector and either bounce it or put the mini two on and use the other one with the reflector on it. So if we look at the back, we have an LCD screen that I've already got dirty somehow. So if we look at the back, we have the controls, which are pretty much exactly what you'd expect. We have an LCD screen and then we have two dials, both which are also buttons. Power switch is actually on the bottom here. And so is the plug for the power. It's like an XLR port. And I think that's better because that means that the cable can just come straight down and then go straight along the light stand or C-stand, whatever it's on. And then the, the actual like, mount itself is it's a little bit more heavy duty than the 100d but not by a whole lot this is amaran this is not aperture amaran is sort of aperture's budget company line whatever you want to call it so it is going to be a little bit more cheaply made compared to the light storm lights like the 300x or the 300d and one of the things about the amaran lights like this is they actually are oh, just one piece. Whereas those Aperture lights will have like the light itself and then they'll have the control box separately, which is where the power goes into and that's where you actually control everything from. Whereas these have it just on the light itself. So it's one unit, which makes it a little bit easy to use, but it also makes it a bit harder to use because if you need to adjust it, you either need to reach up to wherever your light is. You can't always see the screen. That's one of the biggest issues I've found with the 100 You can't always see the screen. So either you just have to guess, move the light, or use the app. Okay, so we plugged in, let's turn it on. That's at 50% and I think that's even brighter than the 100D already. To be fair, the 100D does have the softbox on it. So looking at the screen here, yeah, let's try not to burn the table. Right now we're in the CCT mode. So it's, the dial on the right is going to change the color temperature. I'm probably most of the time gonna leave it at 5600. If I click that, it'll change it down to the green magenta shift so I can make it real magenta or real green. So you would adjust that if you were trying to match it to the lights in the location you're shooting in and you want it, and they're just a little bit weird, either green or magenta shifted. Same with color temperature, just shifting a little bit to one or the other, and you can match lights a lot better that way. You know, let's go all the way up to 100%. You know, that's against the wall <laughs> and it's brighter than the uh, the key light only that is on 100%, which makes sense because it's three times as, as powerful. So what I might actually be able to do is use this light at a much lower intensity. So if I just use the reflector, I could maybe put it up behind me and use it as a hair light at like 1%, which is what it's at now. Or probably more likely what I'll do is I'll use this as my key light with the light dome on it 
and then use the 100D as a hair light. So then I can use the MT Pro for other stuff, accent lights, practicals, motivating practicals, stuff like that. So the label above the dial explains what turning the dial does and then the label below shows you what it's gonna do when you press it. So if you press the left dial, it's gonna change the lighting mode. So then you switches into HSI, which is what we're on now. You know, we can adjust the hue, you know, press it again, go down to saturation. Let's go real desaturated. And one thing I like about this, just from turning the dial like that tiniest bit, this is so much better than the MT Pro when it comes to like changing through the range of either intensity, temperature or hue is like you turn the dial and it's just gonna go there. Whereas with the MT Pro, like you just scroll forever and it takes so long. So this is nice. You can control stuff either really finely because it actually does have quite fine control. You can go, you know, really slowly or, you know, go really fast if you wanna go all the way to one side. So I do like that. In HSI mode, clicking the right button, we'll switch between hue and saturation. You can see that on the screen. And then in the CCT mode, it'll switch between color temperature, CCT, or green magenta shift. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna switch the 300C with the 100D up there to see what sort of intensity I have to have this on to get it to the same level that that's on right now. Give me a second. Okay, so this is at 50% on the 300C. 5600 Kelvin through the Aperture Light Mini 2, and it looks pretty similar. Slightly brighter though, so using this as my key light should be a lot easier now because I can run it either at a much lower intensity, like I am now, I can run it like 50% rather than 100% to get enough light. Or if I need more light, for example, if I want to put an ND on this because I wanted to make the background way darker, or because the background is really bright, and I need to overpower it with something else, I can turn this up way more. Okay, so now we're at 50%, let's go up to 100%, and it's way brighter. Surprisingly, it's not too bright though. So, yeah, maybe I'll run this one at 100% as well. But to be fair, if I get the Light Dome 3, it's much bigger than this, so I could probably get away with running it at a slightly lower intensity, because the light source is just bigger in general. It'll also be softer which will be nice. But anyway, if you're not familiar with the Citus Link app, I did talk about this in the video about the MT Pro, which is actually like me up there. No, it's not the window. So we can go all the way down to 1500 Kelvin using the expanded CCT, all the way up to 20,000, which is quite blue. Go to the standard, go 7,500 at the top end to 2,500 at the bottom end. Let's go back to 5,600 and then green magenta shift, we can go Real green if we got real green lights for whatever reason and real magenta. And then of course we have the HSI so I can just make it whatever color I want. So this would be more if you're doing something very stylistic or using it not as a key light. Like you're not gonna key light yourself with a red light like this. I mean you could, but it should be more for, you know, you're thinking like a music video or you have a very specific style that you wanna have color be very, very important, or you'd use this as maybe a background light or something like that, just not as your key. Anyway, back to 5600, and we'll take it back down to 50%, what it looks like at a quarter. Let's take it all the way down to 1%. All right, we're at 1% now, and it seems to be about as bright <laughs> as the MT Pro back there, which is, I think it's about a 15 watt light, or is it a seven and a half watt light? I think it's a seven and a half watt light. That's just a quick one on the MRN 300C. The next video is actually gonna be on this same set using this light, but talking about lighting A-roll shots. I'll also be using it in a spec shoot that I've got coming up this week as well. So stay tuned for the behind the scenes on that. Thank you for watching. If you wanna watch another video, go watch that one. Last time I did a bit of a lighting breakdown. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Oh, I can't reach it this time. Ah. Wait, hold on.